Remember what I was saying about tough times? She thought this might really kill off her business just when things are starting to get good. But instead of, instead of giving in, the little t-shirt shop that could, she raised a ruckus, and she fought back in the court of public opinion, and she ended up making the NFL back down. And then her business boomed. Today, she's turned that $3,000 into $250,000 business. She's opened up a second location, she employs three people, and she's giving back to her community. You know, I believe that the underlying statement here says, dream big, start small, keep your attitude in shape, and give back to the people who help you. To me, that's a great recipe for success, whether you're selling t-shirts or commercial or residential real estate. But even with all of this progress, I would love to see more diversity among entrepreneurs and, uh, and, and leaders uh, in leadership positions. Today, women of color comprise only 2% of top executive posts in business. And of the more than 2 million companies that are classified as small business in Texas, only about 500,000 are owned by women, and much fewer are owned by women of uh, ethnic descent. To me, that's why the Women's Council of NAREB is just the kind of bridge-building organization that we need right now. I'm encouraged to, uh, to hear a lot of great things about the organization and the growth that you've had since 1971. And it's exciting for me to learn about the impact of the Women's Council has made on real estate industry as a whole. And increasingly slowly, but yes, steadily, the country as a whole is embracing all the talent that women of all shapes, sizes, and colors bring to the business and to the community. As far as my own personal story, I can tell you it took a lot of sweat and a lot of sleepless nights to get to where I am today. But I've learned a lot. And I can tell you that I, I would not be here today if it wasn't for uh, some of my talented team that uh, graciously decided to join me here today. And if you don't mind, I'd like for them to stand up in the back of the room. I've got some of the warrior women here today and some, uh, some of my awesome friends as well. If you would all please stand up. Yeah, I've been working on Warrior Group for about 13 years now, and in, in the beginning I was very inexperienced, and I didn't have an office, and I didn't exactly know what I was getting into. But today, Warrior Group is the largest minority and women-owned uh, permanent modular construction company in the country. And we uh, construct many of the buildings that are used for residential and military housing, administrati administrative offices, healthcare facilities and clinics, education buildings and dormitories, retail centers, and a whole lot more. But we didn't get there the easy, easy way. And along the way, I learned some very valuable lessons, some good, some not so good. But all, all, all the lessons that I learned that made a serious impact on my life. And if you allow me just a, sh a few more moments, I'd like to share some of those lessons with you. Lesson number one, you have to play the hand that you're dealt. Business runs in cycles. Sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. And real estate trends teach us about ups and downs all the time, right? That things happen, good and bad. But when bad things happen, you can't just crawl up into the corner and say, oh, woe is me, I can't get out today. That's not what entrepreneurs do. And that's definitely not what we as women do. I mean, we're not considered the, uh, the stronger sex for no reason, right? And I don't know about you, but with uh, sometimes with juggling my job and my community projects and my son's very busy life, I rarely have time to focus on all of the negative things that go on in life and dwell on the things that I can't change. I can't point fingers and I can't assign blame. And I just have to step back and get a perspective on where I'm at and figure out how I'm going to move forward from here. And then I have to dig in my heels, whether they're, they're the uh, steel toe boots or sometimes my Jimmy Choo's. And sometimes I do that literally just to get the job done. I've also learned that I always have to take the high road. Have you heard that? I always take the high road. And it won't make the situation better to push the problem onto someone else. And it's not in the DNA of great leaders. 
Great leaders take the hand that they're dealt and make the best of whatever's coming their way. You know, I love something that uh, Ebby Holiday shared in an article a few years ago. She said, uh, and I quote, I was accustomed to hardship and extreme effort. Other people who have not had that kind of te uh, tempering experience probably give up a little too easily when they encounter problems. Isn't that so true? No wonder she's one of the most influential and dynamic women and business leaders in our community today. Lesson number two, be happy in everything that you do. Your exuberance is contagious. Maybe some of you may be like me and you might read a lot of business magazines and you've noticed all this talk about passion and finding your passion and pursuing and I think that's great and if you're happy to be in one of those fields then great for you. Um, but I think that one of the main things, um, that, and if you're in a situation like that, oftentimes that, that's a luxury. Uh, and I would rather that you focus on being happy and focus on all the great things that you have in front of you each and every day and work hard to make those things better. We spend so many hours in our workplace and we spend, and when we're not happy, our work suffers and our colleagues don't get the support that they need and our customer service isn't as good as it should be. So while my passion is health and fitness, I dearly love what we do at Warrior Group. And when I see a finished project, something that we did, and it's got the warrior name on it, I'm so extremely proud. 